Let's talk about welding setups. So oftentimes when you're going to weld, the hard part is figuring out how you want your pieces to join up. And then secondarily, the big concern is, well, how am I gonna get this welder into that point to do that thing? Okay, so if for some reason you think this is a good idea, just understand that as you're floating above your material, you are interrupting the circuit, which means you, this hand, is now part of the circuit, and electrons wanna flow from my torch, through my metal, through me, to the table, to the ground, right? So, magnets are your friend. When you're trying to weld one piece of material to another piece, it's really good to start out by using a magnet so that you can tip that material into place in a manner that allows you to adjust your space and say, okay, well, I want this vertex to go right here on this piece of sheet metal, but I don't want this piece of sheet metal to slide, so I'm gonna take another magnet and park it there. And then my goal is to come in here with the torch and just weld this piece in place. Right. So what you want to do is take the time to get all of your sculptural or structural ideas in place, right, so that you can easily see what you're doing and so that your metal is completely stable in your process, right? So you go, okay, this is what I want. I want to weld this vertex right here. I've got my sheet metal clamped. It's not going to move. And I'm going to use this little magnet to hold the bottom sheet metal in place. The top sheet metal is where I want it. And now I need to make sure that it's not going to move in the other direction, right? So I'm just sliding the magnets forward and backward to get it set up. So it's exactly where I want. So now we're going to put on the welding shield and show you what a tack welding process looks like. This is going to be a single pulse arc weld. Welding. So you can see we've got a huge bead here, but it's structural. So once we remove all the magnets, there is nothing holding this up except our weld. And if you want to know how strong it is, you can try to break it, generally with destructive testing, to see how much effort it takes to break your weld. And you'll notice that the sheet metal is bending, but the weld is still good. That's what you want when you do a good setup and a light tack weld, okay? So now what we're gonna do is start sticking things to other things and show you what a good seam weld looks like. So again, we're just gonna weld this joint seam here, and I'm going to pin that in place with a magnet, like so, and then make sure my bottom piece isn't going to move, like so. I'm going to put our welding shield on, and then weld this seam here. Welding.
So at this point, you can still see the radiant heat of the metal. That tells you it's at the point of instant ignition. So if you were to have this near a flammable surface, it would immediately start to smoke. That is a fire hazard. That is also a burn hazard. So you do not want to grab this immediately afterwards. That's why we always have our welding gloves on or we're using tools like the MIG pliers, okay? So one thing we want to look at here, oh, let me just adjust that. Okay. One thing we want to look at here is our heat was hot enough to burn through our weld. That tells us that when we're welding all the way through this process, what we should have done, right, is I grab this piece of metal, is as we are welding our seam from here, to here, when we got to that edge, we should have slowed down or stopped earlier. What happened was we got hot enough to burn through the steel and create this little bubble while also creating this hole. And what happened was the excess heat from the welder traveled from here and made a big drip and it pooled at the very bottom of our weld. So if you think about it from a gravity perspective, right? Right there, we have gravity pulling our weld down. Okay, so there's our hole. Whoop.